to my career uh, to be celebrated, right? And I think that it meant, it meant a lot to me. Is there anything when you now, as you were hearing everyone talk and speak about you, did any memories immediately jump to you from your time here? Oh, I mean, I mean, memories doesn't, you know, <laughs> it don't fade, right? Not for me at this age, you know, so I, I remember everything, you know, from the first day I was um, in high school coming out for pre-draft workouts to getting drafted, putting that Phoenix Suns hat on my head at the draft with David Stern, blessed memory, to playing my first game, to not starting my first 10 games, and then having a, you know, a solid rookie year that propelled me to get rookie of the year, and then going into the playoffs the following year. Like, it was just a lot of beautiful memories throughout my career. Hey, Larry, Gerald Borgay, congratulations on getting inducted. Thank you. I was just curious, what was your reaction when Matt reached out to you and told you he wanted to induct you and kind of repair a relationship that had been you know, a little strained over the years? I was ecstatic. I mean, I was out getting ready to prepare for my son's birthday. And Matt called me and said, hey, we got some good news for you. And I immediately was like, this is the call. <laughs> and it was, um, it was a moment of like, just cherishing that time and that, that, that phone call. And I immediately called my children and said, hey, guess what? You know, your last name is gonna be immortalized. Um, it was a great moment. How meaningful is that to be able to celebrate with your family here and you know, be embraced by Suns fans and recognized in that way after so long and retiring as a Nick and all of that in between. What better way to, to celebrate this moment, right, than with the fans, with the Sun organization, and with my children, right? There's no better way to celebrate this moment. And I think tonight embodied that in its totality. Hi, Mark. Mark. Cox, 12, Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what do you make of the job that Matt has done here since taking over? And then if Matt was the owner back then in your final year, do you think you would have finished your career as a Sun? I do think so. I think if Matt was the owner at that time, Staten Nash would have lasted a lot longer than, than, and then it, it, it happened. But we can't, you know, somewhat cry over spilled milk, right? You know, everything happens for a reason, and we were able to have so much success here where we get a chance to celebrate a moment like tonight. Um, so I think Matt's doing a phenomenal job of celebrating the legends that played here, and also bringing a culture back to Phoenix that's, that's imperative, you know? Amara Nina Washington, 12 News. Congratulations again growing up in the Valley, watching you play. You just left a legacy here in the hmm. Valley. But now you see Thank guys you. like Devin Booker kind of carrying that torch. He spoke very highly of your relationship. What is it like seeing what he's done and to be the longest tenured player on this team now? It's great. I mean, that's what, that's what the game is about passing the torch, right? And he's taking the torch and he's on another level in today's game. The way he plays the game of basketball with such poise and IQ, right? As a young player, you don't see that very often. Um, and I think he's able to study the game in a way where he knows if he continues to play at a high level, he can be one of the greats. And that's the idea for any player that wants to compete at the highest level, you want to be one of the greats. He's on the right path. Younger earlier in the league, that you would send in texts of encouragement, even on nights where they were getting beaten, that he felt like no one was watching. What were your messages to him, and why was it important to you to kind of reach out to him in that way? Well, I think for me, it's, it's always about being able to encourage the next generation, right? I saw Devin when he first got drafted in his early career here in Phoenix, and I wanted to be, you know, there for him if he needed any advice, right? Because I've Seen it all. I've been persevered through a lot, and I was able to accomplish, you know, at the highest level. So, a lot of times as young players, you need that type of, you know, confirmation from players that have been there. And I felt like it was imperative for me to be the guy who would help him if he needed any help along the way. Kellen, hey, uh, sports, just speaking on the way you developed your game after the injury, the Phoenix analogy that you were making earlier. Can you speak to like the physical things that you were feeling and realizing maybe some of the limitations that weren't there before and thus like developing the skill and the prowess that you did in the mid-range and, and in the post? Yeah, after having the microfracture procedure, which 
I never heard of that word before until that moment, <laughs> right? So I had no idea what was in store. Um, and then waking up from surgery, saying that that's, you know, that's a procedure that took place. And I was like, well, okay, wait, was so I'm out for the year. And I was surprised by that. Um, and then going through the excruciating recovery, I contemplated retirement. It's like, I just cannot keep this going. I mean, there's no chance I can barely walk, right? I will come back, reach a high level, have a, you know, great practices. I'm back hanging on the rim, flying through the air. Next day I can barely move. So, you know, but it took a lot of persistence, um, a lot of determination and self improvement in order to like persevere through that moment. And I think that's what propelled me to continue to, to, to become a better player even after the procedure and develop more skills. You look at the glass half full, right? And you, you try to develop skills that you didn't quite have before and come back as a better player. And that's, that was my idea. Yeah, I think one moment that I can think of now is the first time I came to Phoenix as a player that was looking to be drafted here, right, as a pre-draft workout. And Mr. Colangelo and I went to the Diamondbacks game, and we sat down and watched the game, and we had conversation. That moment comes right to mind. It was a special moment for me to spend that time with him because I looked up to him as the owner of the team. Um, and then winning Rookie of the Year, being the first player in NBA history to receive that award from high school. And then also the all-star games, you know, and playing with, I guess we call it now the seven seconds or less team, but even more so, even after that, just playing with Steve and the guys, the accomplishments we, we accomplished and the fun we were having, all those moments accumulate to great times, right? So those moments are, you know, those are the best moments of my playing career. The Diamondbacks did win that night, actually. <laughs> That's right. Who are some of the players that you watch now that you feel share the similar qualities you did in terms of the hard fearlessness, the intensity that you showed? Who are some of the guys you watch now that that? I'm looking around and trying to find a few guys that has that tenacity. Um, I think Giannis has a bit of it. I remember speaking to Tim Gergerich, who was also on the coaching staff my rookie year here in Phoenix. And then he was also with Milwaukee um, when Giannis was a young player. And he mentioned to me at that time when I was with Phoenix and he was in Milwaukee, he said that, you know, that Giannis reminds him of me, right? So I think Giannis has a bit of that tenacity and fearlessness in this game. Right away. In my rookie year, I hit a three to send the game into overtime in the playoffs. So I was always mentally thinking about shooting a three, right? <laughs> Even in crunch time. Um, so if that was the wave of the game at that time, I would have for sure shot more threes. Mark, does being back on the floor make you miss the game? Um, I mean, you coached a little bit last year. Is that something you still want to continue doing in a way? Um, to your first question, I don't, I don't really miss playing much. Right, I played 18 total years of pro. Uh, played internationally. I've trained at the highest level. I prepared myself in the off season. Didn't have much time off. Wanted to always be at the top of my game to contend for a championship every year that I played. So I put a lot into the game. So to go through that grind again, I feel great. Like spending time with the family, relaxing. Um, so I, I don't miss it much at all. Do you have any? I think what Coach D'Antoni brought to the table was he saw the versatility in us as players, right? He saw me as a strong 245-pound power forward, but with the skill and quickness of a small forward. And he saw that most centers wouldn't be able to guard. Like, this guy's strong enough to play center, but he's also quick enough to play forward. 
Like, let's utilize that, right? And he saw Sean Marion as a player who can, who's a natural small forward, but he can also defend anyone except for the centers. Um, and then Nash was the ultimate floor general, right? So D'Antoni gets credit because he saw all of that and was able to allow us to be great at what we do. And I think that, that says a lot about his coaching style.